Uh, yes, the witness is being ushered in, please, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Welcome back, Mr. Silla. Mr. Silla, you're not a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Please be rest assured that this is a truth-seeking activity. There is no other agenda. So I encourage you to speak the truth. You are also under a legal obligation to speak the truth. So by speaking the truth, it becomes a whole lot easier for everybody. Uh, before the break, we were talking about the structure and organization of the convoy. And the last thing you talked about was the fact that people used to run away from the, when they see the convoy approaching. And yes. Apart from the fact that the convoy was equipped with fearful weapons and that they drove at very high speeds. And the fact that uh, they had really very big vehicles. Uh, the convoy itself was designed to ensure the full protection of the president, correct? Yes. And it was organized in a way that the convoy cannot be penetrated. Yes. And uh, your responsibility as members of the convoy was to ensure that any outside threat would be neutralized. Is that the case? Wow. Yes. And in fact, that is the reason why you had those types of weapons, correct? Uh, that was the reason why you also had to use those huge vehicles. Yes, we had huge vehicles. And that was the reason why you had that number of personnel. Yes. And that was also the reason why you people were trained to kill. Through or false? Yes. Answer True. so that we can hear. True. Yeah. So. What would you normally do when you see a threat approaching the convoy? What would you normally do? Legi, before we the convoy, we are going to them. Gen gis dara lo hamne hit na mungko gatan lusi lo hamne oru lenko lo lendi dev. Convoy is more than me. 
the convoy is moving, we see such a thing, we try to block it. We used to block it. So that thing gives way, and then we continue them. But, uh, uh, Mr. Silla, you know you are just simplifying it. Mr. Silla, I'm going to go to the it was never like that during your Jamais time. It wasn't that simple. That's what I'm telling you. When the convoy is moving, 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 when we get to Johnson's, you, you have a vehicle blocking one Johnson, so that the VIP can pass through. So that he can pass. But I'm not talking about junctions. I am talking about obstacles that are seen in the front. What kind of obstacles? Whatever obstacle you found to be a threat. Uh, 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 Sometimes when you see something and you are not sure about it or you feel it's a threat, the vehicle that is behind is the one that approaches it. For instance, when you see a vehicle that you are suspicious of, the vehicle that is always at the back is the one that stops and checks it. If it is necessary, sometimes they take the vehicle to the station. The convoy does not stop. It goes on. But it was normal that people who obstructed the convoy may be shot. Be careful what you say. It is true, but since I started uh, taking part in the convoy, I've never seen where they bust a, a, a car tire. I'm talking about me. I have never seen it. Have you seen a person shot? No, to be frank, I have never seen it. But you know it used to happen. I used to hear it, but I've never seen it. I've never seen it. How about vehicles that obstructed the convoy? Sometimes they are shot. Like they see an upcoming vehicle obstructing the convoy, sometimes they would shoot the vehicle. That is what I'm telling you. It could have happened, but because I've never seen it. Because during my outings with the convoy, I've never seen where where a vehicle was shot and this car burst. Even so, I met him. But what's in your can is there? No, 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 I've not, I've never heard it. You have never, never heard, it. heard that a vehicle's tire was shot at by the convoy, members of the convoy. You've never heard that. Musulo de Gane, Tanki Moto, Bona Ninko, Niko Bona Modi convoy, Fetel Nen Tanki Moto. Musulo Kodega. Mona Muna, the Hennet, any time of Mondo convoy. We went one lady, Mancomboy Dabola. Sometimes I'm a convoy, so I send a man a convoy. Could be when I was not in the convoy because I was a driver. Sometimes I go with the convoy, at other times I don't go with them. Listen to the question. Have you ever heard that uh, the con members of the convoy well, shot at a vehicle? Musgadi Gane, Nineka convoy be fetal name moto. 
Honest to God, I've never heard that. And you want us to believe that? Do you know that you want us to believe that? So what I'm telling you, I don't always go with the convoy. Because I have not heard anything. Whatever I saw, I will tell you. But what I have not seen, I will also tell you. I have not you seen. have not been asked whether you have witnessed a vehicle being fired at. That is not the question. We are not asking you that. The question is, have you ever heard? I've never heard. You want us to believe that? You want us to believe that Yaya Jame's convoy, the, the participants or members of the convoy, you've never heard that they fired at a vehicle? You've never heard that? For these 22 years that you were in this thing, you've never heard that? You've never heard that? One incident at Westfield involving Almamu. And, and, and that one, one and, was not there. and for that one, you did not even hear it, you witnessed it. That was Almamu at Westfield. You were there. Almamu at Westfield. When Almamu was shot at the Westfield? the full of the and then he told him that he was going to defecate bullets. That was where he shot him. And he shot him cold blood? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, the taxi driver was again a taxi driver, Nigerian. So taxi driver and Nigerian, it was a short range. And uh, the guy didn't do anything? The Nigerian? Nigerian, Bobo, the food dara? Giza Bungo Sude. When he sh shot him, that was when he, where he left him. Let's go. And he said to us, come on, let's go. Bab Gajata. Bab Gajata was the one who took him, took him away. And the Nigerian didn't do anything. The Nigerian be the food dara? Because I'm hungry, I'm sorry. I'm not going to die. Because the convoy was after the convoy. I'm not going to watch. I'm not going to go to the top. The convoy did not stop. Because how you got down and shoot him. And it's almost at the same time. Do you realize that uh, that is not in your statement? I am going to lose the full of your statement. I work at Malaya's office when I go on. But the last time when I came to your office, I told you this. You did not put it in your statement. I managed to get that out of you. But but but, but you did not put it in your statement. I didn't put it there because at that time I wasn't questioned on the issue of the convoys. If I was asked, I would have But your statement, your statement talks a lot about the convoys. Why is statement? That one was omitted. I didn't omit it. Maybe I forgot. Okay. But um, on that occasion, the he convoy Almamo stopped the vehicle he was in, came down, walked to the Nigerian in his taxi, and fired at him cold blood. Isn't that what happened? He <laughs> Feka Nigerian be chibir mutum mufetelko. That is what happened. The convoy proceeded like nothing happened. Convoy binyom you continue like men lidara heut. Because because uh, Lolo. That. That time we were from the airport. You know be west with Joko. We came up to the west field by Joko. Feka of the former president. The former president. We want to get to, to, to uh, West African countries. He was traveling to one of one of the West African countries. The taxi, we have Nigerian. 
the taxi which he was driven by this Nigerian it was about to get on the road when it heard the siren he did not get onto the road he stopped that was where Almamo stopped the convoy. He came down, drew, drew his pistol, and fired him. And he said to us, let's go. When he was shooting at the guy, did he make a statement? He said to that uh, he was going to defecate so bullets. bullets. That, that was his statement. Okay. Uh, was the guy a threat to your convoy? Uh, mom, uh, he was in the threat. Because he did not get onto the highway. He was in the threat. It was just about to get onto the highway. And when he heard the siren, he reversed back and, and parked. And the president was not even in the convoy. No, he was not in the vehicles. There was no principal to be protected at the time. It was an empty vehicle. And back to state house. We are going back to state house. But this was this was the attitude of the people in the convoy of the president, correct? Yeah. Yes. You are showing naked power and they were doing whatever they wanted. True or false? True. Have the confidence to answer loudly. True. Well, true. true. So, to the point that road users felt terrorized whenever they heard that the convoy was coming. It's true. And those who were walking with the convoy we are expected to behave in similar manner. You see a threat coming, you neutralize it. So you say, I don't know how to say neutralize in Wolof, uh, but uh, it's to completely remove the threat. That's what used to happen. Lolen Gisdal orne olu ulenko gen fehe sakal kopehe gen neko fa. Sakal kopehe sa hamwe waji and that's the way you used to do it. Teno nungen kodan defe. Okay, I'm 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 going to ask you the the point we're going on. On this point that you are speaking on. Okay, time we must be among money behave that that those kind of attitude. At that time, Almamu was the one who behaved mo, mostly mo in this way. Behave that those kind of attitude. Ah. He was the one with this kind of attitude. Uh, Mr. Witness, Almamu died at around 2001 or thereabout, correct? Serebi, Almamu, then Abu Yagat, DP 2001. That is true. And the killings by the convoy continued through? The shootings at human beings continued? The fatal idom Adam, the continue? True or false? I'm not aware of that. I only. I was aware of only the incident at Westfield because, because it happened in my presence. I never frequented the convoy. The, the question I ask, I'm not saying that you were present. The question I ask is. Is it not the case that the killings by members of the convoy continued?
vehicle accident sometimes happens. What about to, uh, and someone and the person will die. And shootings? So the shootings, I have not heard that. And, and VIP treatment? The accidents, it happens sometimes. Uh, VIP treatment? Yes. VIP treatment happens here now and then. And what is the VIP treatment? What is the VIP treatment? Sometimes, you know, when the convoy is uh, passing, because they never come more about Adam slapping a toxa down what you do. You should say that if it find you, even when while you were sitting down, you were expected to stand up. Oh, uh, let's get this clear. If the convoy is passing and you are sitting down, you have to stand up. When the president is passing, he finds you by the side of the road. So you stand up. And which law says that? I don't know that law. I don't know that law. And then, what would if the person doesn't stand up? What would you do? I don't know that law. I don't know that law. Give the person VIP treatment. And what is VIP treatment? Land more ling and the OA VIP treatment. What was? This uh weeping. Whips. Yes. Was. You are weeping. You are what would they what tell us exactly what would normally happen? What you land nakala de faral de ame. You'll go go beat them up and then the convoy will continue. Have you seen that happen? You must go slow hell. Last, last vehicle. Sometimes the last vehicle. They're in charge. They're usually in charge of such things. They're in charge. They're in charge of such things. And let us know whether this was part of the modus operandi. That was part of the policy surrounding the operations of the convoy. convoy Well, if the individual does not stand up, he or she would be beaten up. Got to an instant whereby even the old men, when they know that the convo is coming, they will all stand up. Uh, we, the commission has received a statement about a young nurse in Kaur who was given this VIP treatment and he died three days later. Are you aware of that? Oh, my son, I have said that if you are a nurse, I have said that if you are a nurse, I have said that you are a VIP treatment. I have said that you are a VIP treatment. I have said that you are a VIP treatment. He is called Lamin Jaju. Are you aware of that? Yes, I am aware of that. I'm not aware of it. But you would accept that this was standard operating procedure for the convoy? Why did you not go to the convoy? No, I didn't go to the convoy. Yes. Who gave that order? I didn't go to the convoy. Don't be scared to answer. Tell us the truth. I'm not going to go to the convoy. I'm not going to go to the convoy. Former president used to give the order. Hana, former president Amutur. Does not does the former president have a name? Yaya Jami. Are you telling the commission Yaya Jami ordered that whenever his convoy passes and people don't get up, they should be arrested and given the VIP treatment? That is your testimony. Ngi mel ni yow, we ci sa wax dal moy ne yaaya jamme dafa joxe ndigal ne sa yo xamene mu ngay romba nit te borom jogu taxaw rek da ngeen wara wacca jappako dor ko. True. True. So this convoy it was a real show of power. It was a real demonstration of power. Legi convoy B, mom da famel ni da dan jai dole diga diga. 
Yefi wone dole la andalon. Do you accept that now? I don't understand. Could you repeat? Convoy be. The family ni mum chil imbi nim dan lige ye dal moy daf dan wone dole torop. Muna 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 you, you, you are going back to you inside your hole again. Well, let's try and see whether you will come out. Okay. Uh, you have said that the convoy sometimes cars were fired at, vehicles were shot. Wanga fine convoy bi legally danyo fetel ay moto. Bo buki almamo Westfield. That was almamo at Westfield. Where are you? was the, the only one I was aware of. That one was even worse. That one was cold-blooded murder of somebody who was no threat to the convoy. That's true. People would run away when they see the convoy approaching. And they were running to save themselves from the convoy, correct? You said that. Because when the, when the convoy is moving, okay. people used to leave the road. And why do they do that? Because it wasn't safe. Okay. Sometimes. Was it just unsafe or they were just running out of fear? Maybe also they are afraid of uh, life. They are running to save their lives because of it's a vehicle. Not only motola, not only is it a vehicle, all right, but it's menacing force that was approaching them. And even in the process, those who do not stand up to so, I don't know what to call that, maybe respect for the president or whatever. president they would give you VIP treatment, which means you would be beaten mercilessly. That's what used to happen. Isn't yes. that a show of force? That is not correct. But isn't it a show of force? I can say it's a show of force. It is a show of force. You agree? Yes, I agree. Yes, I agree. And it is in this context and in this climate and in this modus operandi uh, that you escorted Yaya Jame from Kanilai on the day in which this Arab person was killed along the Battle Harding Highway. It's in that context, isn't it? I don't understand what he is asking. Ce it was deliberate so of force by members of the convoy that led to the death 
of this Arab person. Ni dal tayef la bo hamne konvoi binyo don wone wurek lo lumo sababon be Arabi nyureko. It was so of force. Then don wone dole. That led to the killing or to the death of this Arab person. Lo lumo tahbe Arabi munyaka chibakana. That is the truth, isn't it? Lo lumo idega na det. Pour pour ninge wone dole be be Arabi de. Wow. Show of force. That the that the convoy the convoy ne 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 go down. The fact that the, the convoy was not, was not running at speed, we were running slowly. The issue is not the speed at which the convoy was coming. Uh, uh, Mr. Silla, you must understand, speak properly and be very attentive. Mr. Silla, Togal Bujak Tenga Bai Hell. All we are after is the real truth about what has happened. It is not necessarily always the case that the convoy was wrong. Or that members of the convoy acted unlawfully. Sometimes they may have acted lawfully. So what we are after here is the truth. Tell us the truth about what happened. You are trapped in a mindset at the moment. Put aside that mindset and tell us the truth about what has happened. You understand? On this day, tell us what happened. And speak the truth. It's only the truth that shall set you free. If you dilly dally, or you try to lie, you would always try to bring out the truth. And it's in your interest. So it's in your interest and the interest of all that you speak the truth. Tell us what happened. That's the issue of the right person. Yes. We, we are coming from Kanilai. It was a busy uh, Sunday. It was on a Saturday. We are coming. Was it the first first day of Ramadan in that year? Besi bes bunje kala chiveri Ramadan be at bobo. Forgot that I don't remember. Can you tell us the year it happened? Munga nyo waban at lahewon. Abi 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 wan mukona pali wan koyaga. Was it around 2004? Ah, bori 2004 lahewon. It could be 2004 or 5. I cannot recall. We have received evidence from someone else. It happened in 2004. Yes. Yes. It was in 2004. Proceed, please. We came when we arrived at the Elton in Bijilo. Command vehicle. I was in the command vehicle. And how many other vehicles were in front of you? Two vehicles and one sweeper were in front of me. Uh, okay, let's get it straight. The outrider was in front. He was in front. And then you have the sweeper, the police sweeper. Police sweeper was in this was in front. And then you have the military sweeper. The military sweeper. We have the military sweeper. All of those vehicles were ahead of you. Yes, they used to go ahead to clear the road. Proceed, please. My vehicle was the command vehicle. And what's the purpose of the command vehicle? Command vehicle being our name, what to be got to the command vehicle, Momland, my phone, Jubluwa, and Fufu. I'm a Sinoman, Sinoman, 
senior man. Uh, in charge of the convoy. He's the one that is usually in that vehicle. Uh, one of the, uh, NIA officer to me. And one NIA officer. Usually are in that vehicle. And, and what is the function of the command vehicle or the personalities in, in, in the command vehicle? Uh, uh, the For instance, he is the one who dictates the speed of the convoy, whether to increase the speed or to decrease. And on whose instructions would he determine whether to increase the speed or to reduce the speed? Indigali can la wiru na purwa nene denywara wanyi tanka wala denywara yoka. Okay, uh, PP will be umpa, mokara wane kombo will be move or kombo will slow down? The PP or umpa, we usually tell the same. Um, umpa form person, nyo rebo kamoto. Umpa and the former president used to join the same vehicle, but umpa will give the instructions whether to increase the speed or to reduce it. And uh, would you agree that that would be on the instructions of the president? Whatever message you give is always taken from him. Do you repeat that, please? Do you repeat what you just said? Any message that Umpa gives to the convoy commander? He would have gotten it from the former president. Tell him to, to move on with the convoy to stop or to reduce the speed. Essentially, the speed of the convoy is always controlled by the president. For us, it's the command commander who will tell us to move. Because because motor yep, they need to communicate with all the vehicles have communication sets. And it's his voice that we hear. Sometimes we hear Umpa telling him to slow down the convoy or to move out. We have received evidence that uh, the speed of the convoy vehicle is always determined by the president. Do you agree with that? Okay, uh, this point you are talking about. Even, even, even if the former president was the one that's uh, said so. Maybe Umpa will the one who will pass the message to the convoy commander. Company commander's role is to control the convoy. Uh, would it also be the duty of the command in the, of the convoy to identify threats and direct how those threats are to be neutralized? Legi, kinga hamne mo mo command convoy bi. Because the vehicle that is in front, if it sees at threats, as you are saying, it usually sends information to the company to the to the convoy commander the department of convoy commander mom ba order the module lele mo kone arrest ngo you will go station depends on the convoy commander what decision to take wow. sometimes he tells them to arrest the individual and take them no, to the station no more no more no more station come come more by no more by one be arrest ngo you station guy the just tell me and you find out for instance a car that parked to tell them to take the vehicle to the station and the driver give statement but you accept that it is the responsibility of the convoy commander to pass an order on how that threat is to be neutralized. Why nak munga nangune warugal la pour kinga hamne mom moy commander bi mom moy joxe ndigal pour ham lolu nga hamne mom lañ olu te gis ko mom mo wara joxe ndigal ci ni nga hamne non lañ ñoo jëflanté ak mom. Ba bu son jëflanté. 
how, how to, what kind of dealing with it? If a threat is approaching the convoy. So you say, "Lo, how many mungu nyo jublu si convoy bi? The whole wunko. The first vehicle. Motor bunge kabi. The first vehicle that would come across that threat would have to inform the convoy commander, isn't it? Motor binga hamne mo nje kajang jisante aklo nunga hamne luny olu utla dina joko akinga hamne mo mo commander bi. Can you inform? Can you inform? Usually inform me. And the convoy commander would have the responsibility of telling them what to do. The legal convoy commander will not put more muwahlen lalen wara def. Bo 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 da 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 block. Look, there are certain things you are eager to say. All right, that is the mindset that you have. But just answer my questions. We will get to all the things that you want to say. But just answer the question. Would it be the responsibility of the convoy commander to give a command as to what should be done in the, in, in the instances where there is an approaching threat? Yes, he would give the order. Mama Jo Arabi, definitely, or you will do class now. He will give the order, do this, or take uh, such person to such and such place, because he was in charge. And orders lie like eliminate the threat would be something that would be given. That is a typical order a convoy commander would give. convoy commander convoy commander will give Like get rid of him. Or for us to shoot him over. I'm just saying whether this is a, a typical order a convoy commander may give. command convoy Muna johe wada kom moto o eni moto moto ba mene bayo tuyambi moto ba mene bayo tuyambi muna johe wada mene nako nako gai get niyo buko. You could give an order, for instance, if a car would not go off the road, you could give the order for it for them to get it and take. How about shoot him? Naka ni fetelko. Kombo kwa mene kombo kwa mene yaka yaka mene amne dole pua pujo order sora order ne sudlingi. I don't think the, com the convoy commander has the, the power to give the order that somebody be shot at. Well, who would have the power? And my am dole bina. Because because President Makwara, Henya President Makwara. Maybe the president should be the one to. Why why not shooting Mamus Makwara? Why not we are shooting? We are shooting. Shooting I've never heard. But you are, you would say that it is the president who would have the power to order the shooting. Why did you not want the president be more am dole? If the convoy is moving, but that has never happened. So, so when we have shootings, when we have evidence of shootings, you would accept that those would have been ordered by the president. Listen carefully. You just told us that if there are shootings, they would have been ordered by the president. That's what you just said moments ago. Yes. Yes. Oh, but you told us that you've never witnessed it. Because Yes, in all of the times that I was uh, going with the convoy, but I've never witnessed the shooting, that, that except the incident at Westfield, which happened right under my feet. But you also agreed that uh, if we do have evidence of such shootings, you, it is your belief that they would have been ordered by the president. Why nangunga ne? So fake ne sa fetel amna bonda fa fake ne president biyo hindi galbi. That's what you said. Lolonga wa. Sine sine kama moja wa. But all he was the one that gave the order. Let me leave the point and move on. Let me leave the point and move on. So on this occasion, who was the 
convoy commander when you were coming from Kanilai on the day the Arab guy died. Lieutenant not working now. He's left the army now. So you were in the same vehicle with Lieutenant Balde? Yeah, yeah, Lieutenant Balde. He's in the same vehicle with Lieutenant Balde. I Sonko. Myself, him, and Sonko. Which Sonko? Ban Sonko. NIA officer. One NIA officer. Because of Bainali. He also left the work. What was the purpose of having an NIA officer in the uh, convoy commander's vehicle? Lan mo won jublu way bi tax be ñu am kuy liggey NIA nek bokk ak convoy convoy commander bi ben moto ana anga NIA am nañ office state house you know the NIA have an office at state house you always present smoking as well always when the president is going out no da dañ bokk ñu we used to also join him and go with him would you say that it is to pass on information intelligence information Yes, that's their job. If they saw anything, so so that that information could quickly reach the convoy commander. convoy commander. Sometimes when they see something that or an individual they consider as a threat. They will take that person to their office for further investigation. From all you know, uh, the people who have either been involved in an accident or they shot people or they beat people uh, as a result of, of what they perceive to be obstructions in the convoy, have you ever seen any person prosecuted? convoy. <laughs> From the army or members of the convoy? No, I mean the vehicle owners or what? Members of the convoy. Have you ever seen any one of them prosecuted? I've never heard. Have you ever seen any one of them punished? Yes, nga ken ko hamne dal yar nain ko chi. Never heard. Even Al Mamo, you would you call the shooting of that Nigerian cold blood murder? Al Mamo, mo munga minga wah ni sa hamne ri fetel bim fetel on Nigerian bo unha dinga wah ni dinga ko rei chi tahawai bi. Transport, bo munga dapat ay is transport. It was willful on the spot. So you would agree that that was willful murder? Yes. That was willful, deliberate. Even even the former army commander Babu Gajata. Even the former army commander Babu Gajata. Because then then there's a new new just a more MP military police. I heard that he even said that uh, the military police should come and collect Al-Mamu. But al said that if the military police came, they would defecate bullets. And so nobody was brave enough to go after him. Nothing happened to al -Mamu. The way al was at that time, nobody was... Uh, Mamu was so confident of his jujus that um, if you talk one or twice, he will tell you if you talk, you are going to defecate bullets. And no, people who are scared of him. Was it the charms he had or was it power given to him by uh, Jami? Because 
Well, Al Mamo knows where he Wamu got Yeru. his powers from. Because but, he was like that, even while he was at Indum. But the 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 he believed, he believed so much in his uh, charms, so much so that he was not afraid of anything. But he was so dead in, in spite of his charms. As you see it, how did it end? So it would not have been because of the charms. It definitely must have been because of powers he was given. You will send me to their village, to Nunku, but he will tell me, the first thing he will tell me is that even if you saw my parents on the highway, don't that's why I'm Pinter. Pinter told me, here are uh, Almamo's relatives. I took them, I gave them a ride to Sutan Nunku. When I came back, he was angry with me. And he said to me, that that, that be the last but time. But we are talking about show of power. We are talking about the power to just execute someone in cold blood and nothing comes out of it. But why do you think that the army commander could not even effect an arrest of uh, Alma Momane, having murdered somebody in cold blood? With the full knowledge of the army commander, what do you think is the reason why he could not even affect, affect an arrest? Langa Fognenda, army commander, we dole him am munuto na fehe nu arrest alma mo mo mo. Gaham ne or na kone rei bim rei wa jo jo dafko rei chitayev mo teirek dafko. You know, silu mande bo mo bo silu ni ni na mo msa johena ora bi bo njiga rimjelo ko. What I heard that uh, he himself gave the order for him to be arrested. Njiga alma mo. They could go and pick up Almamo. When you get state house, when they left state house, when they got state out. On lower, mo 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 na MP no, na na kofi kabu. The full attack will federal federal me. Na 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 ganyan nimpuban. What did he say? He said, let the MPs come and meet him where he was. He placed his uh, pistol and who, said, when they come. Who was Almamo working for at the time? Jamano bo Almamo kan la dan ligeyal. You have state house then, Lekon. You know we are working for the president. You know what? We are the state house working for the president. But, that time the president had traveled. But obviously, when the president returned, he would have heard about the killing. When president be bulonda for tuki sa bim nipsi de gana affair rebi. Bo mom, bo mom hina ki ame kwa na nako brief. As for that one, maybe he would have been briefed by the army commander. But I don't have any idea on that. But at the time, Almamo was very close to Yaya Jame, wasn't he? Why Jamano Bob Almamo Jaganel won a Yaya Jamede? Yes, he was close to him, but later on he was demoted. After he was not close to Yayame. But but at the time of this particular incident he was very close to Yaya Jame, wasn't he? Why Jamano believed on hell, Bobu Jagana Yaya Jame Torosa. In fact, he yes. would be the last person you would meet before entering Yaya Jame's office. Uh, that time, before you enter Yaya Jame's office, Al Mamu would be the last person you would meet before entering the office. Jamano Bobo, Balanga Duga, Pur Ega Chiaya Jame, Al Mamu, Momga Muje Jot, Rek, Gad Ega Chiaya Jame. No, for, for, uh, so I'm going to them see obviously, obviously, I'm being. No, if you wanted to go to his office, Digam, Digam, you know, obviously, but never. There were many officers. Almamo by then he was a staff sergeant. At the time, Almamo was a staff sergeant, and the others were officers. But even even at that, Almamo was one of the main office personnel inside that that uh, the corridor going into the president's office. You would find Almamo there before you get into the president's office. Almamo for you know you know you know. Jamano Bobu say you dem ti president be dinga feka Almamo for balanga do be ti president. Almamo was there and there were other officers as well. So he was that close. 
And nothing happened to him when he carried out that murder. But it, so but that, it, I do not have an idea. But it is clear that no one has ever been prosecuted from, um, from amongst members of the president's convoy. No one has ever been prosecuted or disciplined for violating the law. I've never heard, but as you have seen, if there were to be any court, Almama should have been taken to court, but I have never heard that. Never heard it. And, and would you agree that because there was no disciplinary measures uh, taken out on the members of the convoy, it brazened them up, it emboldened them to, to do whatever uh, was expected of them. Bondinga nangune ngir diga hamne moy dole biñ amon dafa taxone be ñom lepa lo hamne buga nañ ko def rek dañ ko daan def. Te dara du ci geena. Te dara du ci geena. Moy 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 bamu sam. That is what kind? Kom niñ daan defé de modus operandi just as they did neutralizing threats as they usually work eating people Beating the people. Okay, Lolo, got to a time when the commander at State House, our commander, mom allowed those such things. Because mom always come with convoy Because uh, before the convoy comes out. We used to warn the soldiers and the drivers as well. Just them, even if you uh, arrest, arrest a driver or uh, take a vehicle, don't do anything to the person. Take it to the, take him to the station. Some former commander. Our former commander. Which commander was that? I know your commander. Be. General Tamba, always the emphasized the problem. General Tamba, always he emphasized that. What's his first name? Osman Tamba. Nakala Tuda? Osman Tamba. Osman Tamba. Okay, even case of Mufane on commander, Sirin Murunjai. Even when Sirin Murunjai was commander, Mamsa Lola, the quarter emphasized. He also emphasized the same thing. But in spite of all that, these things have continued to happen. Uh, Mr. Chair, we, we require to take a few minutes break um, uh, to enable interpreters to make certain adjustments. Just five minutes. Fine. The meeting is suspended for five minutes then. Thank you. Thank you.
ndao la min bete ñu fatel ne ya ngi ci bir wat bi nga waton so you are telling us that okay you move from kanilai and you arrived around the atlas on the battle harding uh, from bijulo end tell us what happened legi ya ngi wax ne fim nek ni baye ko ngeen kanilai ñu ngeen ba tollu ci atlas bi ci wati bijulo legi wax ñu nak lana xew you told us that the outrider and the police sweeper and the military sweeper were all ahead legi wax nga ñu ne ñi ngeen de wax outrider ak di military sweeper ak police sweeper bi yepp nekkon ci kanam ga ñu mo ci kanam yes de wen fa and what happened lan mo xew nak gannaaw bi ki ama ahuma nar la mati won ngi ñaw ak police bi nam mercedes benz this guy i don't know whether it was an arab or a white person who was coming with his mercedes benz what type of mercedes benz man fa so ñu mercedes benz la won mo mo may moy mercedes benz mercedes benz gu dañ ni these are these uh, the long ones is was it a sedan or was it a 4x4 sedan la won wala li ñu wax 4x4 no am na 4x4 4x4 la ko ñu nekkon sedan won tamé jawana i think is a 4x4 just as the ones that we had the state house during jawara's time was it an ml or was it this uh familiar as they call it benz bi ml la won wala li ñu oyé familiar mëna ma mëna ko né familiar benz bi ko benz bu gudda can say it's a familiar because it was the long it was long bends so that's a sedan and not uh, a suv bon lolu mom la ñoo oyé sedan du suv and what kind of vehicle were you in yow nak ban fa suñ moto ngeen nekkon man li bi nam ford i had a ford what kind of ford ban fa suñu ford american type american type moy moy ford ford ma gimi american type eight cylinder vehicle big one moy you cylinder yi da it's the cylinder uh, and that would be the the f 250 moy bi ñoo that is even bigger f350 is f350 kay mo gëna max sax that's the type of vehicle you have fa sang moto bo nga amé won yes that is a frightening piece of machine isn't it lolu machine bu rak lolu la dé true or false digala wala dit machine bu rag lola was a fear fear some vehicle in yes. this and then proceed to tell us what happened egalil mo mi joy ni mi bore bore senegambia it was coming from the senegambia end ngene mo ngene bore tonti mo ngene bore tonti bu heading towards the turn table at what point did you see the vehicle ban waxtu nga gis moto bi fega fega mo mo de visa almost close ni almost we were almost close at the time but after your vehicle was after the outrider and the two sweepers legi mo sa moto bi mo ngi nekkon ci gannaaw outrider bi ak ñaari sweeper yi how close were you naka ngeen jege ñante won to the to the uh, military sweeper naka nga jege ñante won ak sweeper bu military moy ñaa moto yi nga wani is that because you're talking about no sin distance was drop distance was far apart ko da nga gëje outrider bi outrider police sweeper bi and the uh, police sweeper a uh, military sweeper bi and the military sweeper the same of the story the distances between them is always just far apart just bu ngi men example ak ñu sénégal fi traffic light For instance if we are at the traffic light they would be around kotu police because they used to go ahead to so, so clear the way it therefore means when you guys were approaching you have a very clear vision between atlas and senegambia it was virtually empty bon dafa melni ba ngeen na ñew ye nak doon gis yoon wi yeb dara nekku fa digante atlas be Yes the way was cleared it so was cleared at what point did you first see the mercedes benz approaching legi nak ci ban waxtu ngeen gis mercedes benz bobu di ñew what are you saying the time i don't understand at what point where on the road did you first saw the mercedes benz bi nga nekke ci yoon wi nonu ci ban jamono nga ñika gis mercedes benz bi because ki boss mo debi was vehicle because we mu baña wacha 
Go sweeper, sweeper me. Sweeper? Please sweeper, me go sweeper, Mubanya Waja. When he swept him, he refused to leave the were you Were you seeing that at that point? Young don't get slow, you know, Yaman Abu. Through communication, Bila. Through the communication. Communication. So, what were you communicated? What were you told? Lan Len Lawa. Convoy commander, convoy commander, the one I'm not going to go in your gas, we never go. Because the convoy commander said there is a vehicle approaching. They swept it, but it would not leave the way. At that point, what did you, what came to your mind? Did you see it as a threat? Yaman Bobu, your Lord on Halat, Nenda Hilu, and Dangan Kogisene, Olu and Dal Motobobu. You will take it as a threat because it was swept and it, it refused to leave the way. And as per your training, what were you to do with a threat? Approaching threat. When you see an approaching imminent threat, so you say, lo hamne munge nyo te feka olu loko. Lo smo nyo lege lege da na trebo punga punga mane seal VIP. When such a threat is approaching, you try to seal the VIP. But isn't it also your responsibility to neutralize the threat to make sure that the threat no longer exists? Nda hali en lo on sen lege ta me punga en gisne lo lungi nyo te olu len konga en fehe gao sa kal kopehe bala exi. Sometimes, just as uh, you are saying, uh, uh, now we are talking about your training, what you are supposed to do. We are not asking about what you did. We are talking about what you were trained to do, what comes naturally to you. This is what we are talking about. Legi wa hatun linga defde. Linga wa moi. Banga janga sambiri lige soldar. Lan len la janga lon ne lo lunga warona def. Lo warona halat jamano bumu. No, for a soldier, what you are taught, you are taught many things. I say, a soldier, you are taught many things. Was, was, but was that part of your training? But, uh, the bodyguard is uh, trained how to protect your VIP. Yes, but you were not the bodyguard at this time. There were two bodyguard vehicles right behind you. And those bodyguard behind. vehicles were the vehicles that were supposed to seal the president. Correct? But you see that my vehicle... Let, let's just answer the questions uh, that I'm asking. Uh, your vehicle was supposed to neutralize the threat even before it gets to the next level, wasn't it? Yes, we are supposed to block it. No, I am not talking about blocking. I am talking about neutralizing the threat, removing the threat. To remove the threat, make sure that to completely neutralize the threat, cause it not to exist. That could be. That is, that is what you are trained to do. They trained that, that as well. And on that particular occasion, the, the commander was in your vehicle. The commander was in your vehicle. Was in the vehicle. And it was, in fact, the responsibility of your commander to give you an order as to what to do. Telulu waru galla wan pur commander bi mujo hlandigal chilanga waradef. 
The convoy commander said a vehicle is approaching, try and block it. And it was therefore your, re your responsibility to take steps to ensure that no matter what, that approaching vehicle will not get to the next, next level in the ring, hey, to the next layer in the ring. Lolo sawaru galla won pour yow ak no mu na def nga gis ne moto bobu nga xamne mu ngi doon ñew nonu nga fexé kalé ko be nga xamne du du la romba egg fenen. Yes. And to prevent the vehicle from reaching the penetrating to the next layer, you had to do something. Is it that? Ni nga mu na def pour téré ko pour mu egg ci benen fanna bi lolu mu sawaru galla pour nga def dara be nga xamne du muna du muna jalla pour ega to do something to stop it from approaching to the next level yes and it did not depend on what the other vehicle or the driver in that vehicle did lol na weru ko won rek ci ne benen moto bi wala driver ba nek ci benen moto bi lan la def it had to depend on what you were going to do to make sure that he did not penetrate. Yes. What did you do? Because uh, when I saw him approaching, at what point on the highway, where was your location when you first saw him? Give, give us a landmark around that area. Fan nga tollu won banko nje ka gis wax ñu naka Was it at the Atlas? Was it at the Coco Ocean? Was it at the ITC? Uh, was it at Senegambe Junction? Let us know where you were uh, when you first saw the vehicle. Dañ bu ko xam yow fo tollu won dal banko nje ka gis Atlas la won ITC wala Senegambia wala fan fan nga tollu won. Et et ci the Elton, exactly. You That's were what at the Elton. And where was this, where was, at this time, where was the second sweeper, the military sweeper? Yo, Bobo time, yeah, I want to Elton me. Why, you know how many more military sweeper be more fun at all? You know, sorry, Nick. They were far off. No, they sorry. They used to be far. But at what point were they on the battle hiding? They, they passed Senegambia, correct? Nyom fan lañ tollu won ci talibatin hadin bi romba nañ senegambia ñom 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 ah li fay ne ah bes bobu that day no we are talking we not talking about that day we talking about at that point you were at the atlas 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 bijulo yeah. heading yes. towards traffic lights right yow ya ngi won atlas bijulo fa nga tollu won jublu ji traffic light when you first had the information that there is this vehicle uh, which uh, is insisting on remaining on the road in spite of being being ordered off the road. Banga de gene amna moto bo hamne munge nyode tere nengko nak pur muda wacha yon wah nengko mu wacha yon wi wa munge force rek pur ek yon wi. You said the road was very clear, so you would obviously know where the sweeper, the military sweeper was. Ngane yon winak mungi seton, ben moto neku for one. Bon waranga ham, fan la military sweeper with all the one. Military sweeper with all the one. Military sweeper with all the one. Military sweeper, if you check, he would have been around Coco Oso. Around Coco Oso. Yes. And that would have been just about 300 meters. You would agree? And around, three, around 300 meters. Yes. Between Coco Ocean and the Atlas. The Elton. You agree? You cannot estimate. Would, would it be more than 300 meters? In your thinking? What now? But would you That's say that that is a fair guesstimate? Why had you not known that the Dalini Tetemiri would not have the Dalini Mako Haima would not have told you no? No, no. It could be. Uh, and uh, 
what was the distance between the outrider and the police sweeper? Digante lingawa outrider bi ak police sweeper bi sen digante bi num tollu won because I'm going to say, my mind is coming because I'm not going to scan. Why didn't you send this and the video story? No, I was in the command vehicle. I wouldn't know the distance. But I, the distance between them used to be far off. Video story. Would they have been around Senegambia? Muna amne hedi nyanyu kutolo on Senegambia. Muna outrider mo pasi na Senegambia. It could be that the outrider even has already passed Senegambia. Mo mo ni nyika dem mukle a yobi mude ra nyobi kule. Because he first clears the way and then the others follow, follow suit. And then after the outrider, you have the police sweeper. Police sweeper. So did the police, did this Mercedes Benz penetrate the first sweeper and then to the second sweeper? Or which was the first vehicle it encountered? Mercedes Benz B. Duga na chisu ipa bunjeka vi, bali dem bache nyabi. Ban ban la gen jeka duga dal. Because because ah, nyum ah, man smo motivu smo motivu. My vehicle ah two two si communication. Then then ye guys ah sweepne mo de pum pum ah mo wacha na mo da wacha mungye nyu. Through the communication, they said that they sweep this vehicle, but it insisted and it would not stop. And who was that? Kan lawan. Who gave he, who gave that report? And more than one, what terrain and cop put me watch you on with an angle? Because I'm not going up a police similar to the government communication. I'm not police level of military, but the name of communication. The police have a communication set, it could be the police or the military. But if you don't guess that they will communicate, but the police see they will communicate. The military to whatever they saw, they will communicate to the convoy commander. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, this would be a convenient point to stop for us. There is an issue we're trying to resolve before we finish with this witness. So uh, I'll brief you later. Uh, it's nothing dramatic, uh, but uh, we just need to uh, take a look at that. So we take a break now, and we finish very early in the next session. Maybe 15, 20 minutes into the next session, we would have finished. Well, okay, fine. So we should um, uh, go for a lunch break a bit earlier than uh, normal. Yes, uh, it's just by six it's, minutes or so. Is it a procedural matter? Uh, uh, substantive matter, substantive. but substantive. we would sort it out. Yes, so, so, so we come back uh, a little earlier than, well, we just take one hour and no, we return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 okay, fine. Um, we'll take the lunch break and come back at 2.30. Uh, meetings adjourned. Thank you.